गुड इवनिंग इज माई स्क्रीन विजिबल यस सर विजिबल let's wait for 2 uh, to 3 minutes and then we'll start okay so good evening let's start uh, today's session so today's session is basically based on the problems on the topics which were uh, relevant to the contents of week 4 of this course on fluid mechanics so um, if you have followed all the lectures uh, you must have seen that the week 4 of this course was basically dedicated to the conservation of energy or bernoulli's equation okay and apart from that there were some applications of the conservation of momentum as well so <clears throat> bernoulli's equation is again a very important concept uh, in fundamental fluid mechanics and uh, it is basically the it signifies the conservation of energy in case of a uh, fluid in case of a flowing fluid okay and it's very important that you should understand properly what is bernoulli's equation most importantly what are the assumptions behind the derivations of bernoulli's equation so that you know per exactly when and where to use bernoulli's equation it is not like that in every case you can use bernoulli's equation so only when the assumptions under which the bernoulli's equation bernoulli's equation is derived when those assumptions are valid in those situations you can uh, apply bernoulli's equation for solving the problems otherwise you cannot apply bernoulli's equation okay so uh, let's uh, move to the first problem so it is a multiple choice question uh, bernoulli's equation in its usual form is written as p by gamma plus b square by 2z plus z equal to constant in this equation each of the term represents option a energy in kg meter per kg mass of fluid energy in newton meter per kg mass of fluid then option c energy in newton meter per newton weight of fluid and power in kilowatt per kg mass of fluid okay so what is basically asked from you that bernoulli's equation 
in its usual form is p by p by gamma or p by rho g where gamma is the unit weight then p square by twice g plus z is equal to constant now in this equation you have to understand that each of the term represents certain physical quantity so what is that physical quantity so out of option option options a b c and d uh, please try to uh, answer and whenever you are answering please give your justification Okay, Pradeep uh, has written answer C. Okay, okay, fine. Anyone else? Okay, so Pradeep, yes, you are correct. The answer is C. Now, as a part of the explanation, it is very important that C, if I write Bernoulli's equation, P by rho g or gamma plus V square by twice g plus z equal to zero, uh, sorry, equal to constant, some constant k. Now, here all these terms, okay, all these terms, this P by rho g, v square by 2g plus z okay all these terms individually represent energy okay all these terms individually represent energy now what is this the first term is basically pressure energy per unit weight okay so i'm just writing ep pressure energy but it is per unit weight what is v square by 2g v square by 2g the velocity head or the kinetic head it is basically the kinetic energy per unit weight of the fluid and z that is the datum head is what datum head is the potential energy okay epo potential energy per unit weight of the fluid okay now uh, if you go for dimensional analysis then after doing all the calculations you will find that all of these terms this energy per unit weight is having a dimension of l okay and when you express it in si unit it becomes meter if in cgs unit it will be in centimeter okay so basically the dimension is l or the dimension of the length okay but these are not lengths actually these are energy per unit weight now what is the unit of energy or basically what is energy ability to do work is called energy but energy bears the same unit as that of, as that of the work done now work done can be written as the dot product of the force and the displacement okay the do dot product of the force and the displacement is the work done now if you uh, work out the dimension and analysis here then the unit of the work done will be force for force it is newton and for displacement it is meter okay so newton meter and what is the unit of weight the unit of weight is again newton so the option as pradeep already uh, has said is option c energy in newton meter per newton weight of fluid so i hope this is clear let's move to the next problem the piezometric head of a flow the piezometric head of a flow is the sum of the velocity head and datum head option a option b the sum of the pressure head and datum head option c the sum of the pressure head and the velocity head and option d the sum of the velocity head pressure head and datum head so which one will be the correct option it's a very simple problem
So what is piezometric head? Which one will be the correct option? Anyone? Okay. Uh, option A, option B. Yeah, I got two answers. So option A is sum of the velocity head and datum head. Option B is sum of the pressure head and datum head. Okay, fine. So one wrote A, someone wrote B. Okay. So any more answers? Okay. So if we again write the Bernoulli's equation, so P by rho G plus B square by twice G plus Z, this represents the total energy, say I am writing capital H, the total head or the total energy at a point. Okay. Out of this, this is the pressure energy. The first term is the pressure energy per unit weight. This is the kinetic energy per unit weight and this is the potential energy per unit weight. So this is pressure head, kinetic head and the datum head. Okay. Now, from this, if we only consider, okay, if you only consider the first term that is the pressure head, and the last term that is the datum head okay if you are measuring the energy only with respect to the pressure head and the datum head you have not considered the velocity head okay if you have not considered the velocity head then these two terms constitute the piezometric head okay the total energy or the total head is the summation of all these three terms but sometimes what happens you can consider the flow Maybe in a porous media. Okay, in case of a porous media, the tortuosity of the path is so much that the flow velocity V, okay, the flow velocity V is very less. Okay, it is much less than 1. Much, much, much less than 1. So, as a result of the, which, a number which is much less than 1 and when you are raising it to a power of 2 and then you are again dividing it by twice of the acceleration due to gravity, the overall value becomes very small. Okay, negligible. So, you can... For practical applications, you can, for your own convenience, you can neglect this value. Okay. So, after neglecting the kinetic head, whatever is left, it is the pressure head and the datum head is known as the piezometric head. So, the correct option is, uh, option, yeah, sum of the pressure head and datum head, that is option B. So, somebody wrote option B, other. So, that is the correct answer, option B. Okay. So, I hope this problem is clear. See, uh, sometimes and not sometimes, every time we sit for a competitive exam like gate or engineering services, not all the problems will be based on uh, solving numericals. You will find some problem like this where they will ask you something very direct, but they will give you the options in such a way that it might create confusion. The four options will be very much close, so it might create confusion. So that's where your conception, how clear your conception is, it matters a lot. So you'll definitely find some problems and these problems are very simple. If you know the thing, you will answer directly. There is no waste of time. Okay. For doing numerical, it requires calculations. You have to do the calculations and then, then you have to obtain the correct answer. But this kind of problem, if you know the concept, then you can straight away answer. So try to score 100% or 100% in this type of problems. It can create a lot of difference. Okay. Let's move to the next problem. In a flow of a real fluid with no addition of energy, okay. In a flow of a real fluid with no addition of energy, option A, the energy line will be horizontal or sloping upward in the direction of flow. 
the energy line can never be horizontal or sloping upward in the direction of the flow. The piezometric line can never be horizontal or sloping downward in the direction of the flow. The center line of the pipe can never be above the energy line. Okay. So please read the options very carefully. Okay. And in the question it is given that it is a flow of a real fluid and where in between there is no addition of energy to the flowing fluid. Then which of the options will be correct option? Okay. Please go through the options carefully. I have already read once the options. So please go through the options carefully and tell me which one will be the correct option. You can write in the chat box. Anyone? Think logically, the problem is this particular question is not very difficult. Okay, no answers. Okay, let's uh, look at a situation. Okay. Say there is a say there is a reservoir. Sorry. Say there is a on a hilltop there is a reservoir. Okay, say there is a reservoir. Hmm. Say there is a reservoir on a hilltop and <laughs> there is a pipe connected to the reservoir which this is the pipe okay through which the water flows from the reservoir and say there is another reservoir at 
the bottom of this particular hill okay there is another reservoir which is at the bottom of this particular hill okay and these two reservoirs are connected by these two reservoirs are connected by a pipe okay these two reservoirs are connected by a pipe so is the situation clear is the situation clear yes sir yeah, okay so this is our reservoir a and this is our reservoir b and reservoir a and b are connected by a pipe okay now if you want to if you want to if you want to say uh, transfer water from reservoir a to reservoir b okay so what effort is required from your side suppose you want to transfer water from reservoir a to reservoir b what effort is required from your side a higher energy level to lower energy level yeah it's coming to that no that is fine higher energy level to lower energy level but i am just with respect to this particular situation say you have to transfer water from reservoir a to reservoir b so do you need any special effort yes what, what you told is very correct okay i was coming to that i was coming to that point the point is please remember please remember okay and don't ever forget that fluid always flows from a point or region of higher energy to lower energy okay so fluid always flows from a point of higher energy to lower energy okay you might find some resources you might find some people who are telling that it is from higher piezometric head to lower piezometric head no the answer is always higher energy to lower energy and what is energy by energy i means the total head which is the summation of the pressure head the kinetic head and the datum head so a fluid always flows from a region of higher total energy to a region of lower total energy okay now the total energy at a point say total energy at section a total energy at section a is basically say p a by rho g plus v a sorry v a square by twice g plus z a okay that is the elevation of the z now this factor in this particular situation the water means many people will tell and that is correct also that is water is flowing from point a to point b due to the action of gravity yes it is correct it is due to the action of gravity but rather than telling it like that the correct way of denoting the flow is the total energy at point a is the summation of these three that is the pressure head at a the kinetic head at a and the potential head at a and similarly if you write pb by rho g plus vb square by twice g plus zb is the total energy at point b now since you have to transfer water from reservoir a to reservoir b okay the energy the total energy at point a should be higher than means this pa by rho g plus v square by twice g plus z a should be higher than the total energy at point b okay now because of this elevation difference okay say this is our datum okay say this is our datum with respect to this datum you are measuring so because of this say this is our z a okay and this will be z b okay say so this much is z b now because of this elevation difference okay the datum head alone okay the variation of the datum head alone is making the total energy at a much higher than the total energy at b and that's why water is flowing water will flow automatically if there is no other valve and something if opened everything water will flow automatically from point a to point b now the next part is suppose you have to supply water from reservoir b to reservoir a in this case then what will you do then definitely theoretically you need to increase the total energy at point b means you increase means whether you increase this term you increase this term or increase this this term okay 
whatever you do, if you want to supply it from point B to point A, you need to increase the total energy at point B. And if you want to increase the total energy at point B, what will you do? Or what is done normally? We make use of pumps. Okay, we make use of pumps which tremendously increase the pressure head. Okay, which tremendously increase the pressure head and as a result the total energy at point B will increase and there will be flow of water from reservoir B to reservoir A. So, please keep it in mind that the water flows from a region of higher energy to or any fluid flows from a region of higher energy to lower energy. Okay. So, I hope this situation is clear. Now, let us look at the options. Okay. The energy line. By energy line, it means here the total energy line. Now, what is energy line? Suppose this is a pipe. Okay. So, at different location, the total energy will be different. Okay. The total energy will be different. And say this is the direction of the flowing water. Okay. Now, since it is flowing water or flowing fluid, then what does it mean? The energy on any upstream section will be higher than the corresponding downstream sections. So, if the total energy, if you plot on a graph the total energy value with respect to this horizontal location on the pipe, then or maybe any other situation, then if the flow direction is this one, then the energy on the upstream section will be higher than if you move downstream it will be lower. Again, further downstream it will be still lower. So, it will be something like this. Okay. And if you connect all these dots, you will be getting the total energy line. Okay. And similarly, if you do it for only the piezometric head, you get the hydraulic grade line. Okay. Now, energy line will be horizontal or sloping upward in the direction of flow. Okay. So, can do you think energy line, horizontal energy line, is it possible if the fluid is flowing? It is not possible, right? So, you can discard option A. Let us look at option B. The energy line can never be horizontal. Yes, if it is a flowing fluid, it is a real fluid. Okay, it is a real fluid. There will be head loss. Had it been an ideal fluid, then the case would have been different. Since it is a real fluid, there will be head loss. Okay, energy line can never be horizontal or sloping upward. Okay in the direction of flow. Sloping upward in the direction of flow means if this is the flow direction, it will be sloping outward means this line will be something like this. Is it possible? What does it mean? It means that along the flow direction, the total energy is increasing. That is not possible. Okay. So, energy line can never be horizontal or sloping upward. So, this option B is a possible option. But let us explore the other options as well. C. The piezometric line can never be horizontal. You cannot say about piezometric line because piezometric line is not the total energy. Had it been a porous media flow, in that case, the situation was a little bit different. But for any generalized case, piezometric line will not give you any definite idea. Okay, you cannot judge. The center line of the pipe can never be above the energy line. Again, this is the case. Center line of the pipe may lie below energy line if the total energy is very less. Okay, so the only possible option is option B. Energy line can never be horizontal for a real flowing fluid or sloping upward in the direction of the flow. So, the correct answer is option B. So, see this is a simple problem but it requires certain conception, certain understanding of the flowing fluid in terms of energy conservation. Okay. Now, let's move to the next problem. Okay. Water flows in a circular pipe. Okay, so there is a circular pipe inside which water is flowing. At one section, the diameter is 0.3 meter. The static pressure is 260 kilopascal gauge, means it is gauge pressure. The velocity is 3 meter per second and the elevation is 10 meter above ground level. Okay. The elevation at a section downstream. Okay, at a downstream section, the elevation is 0 meter. The pipe diameter is 0.15 meter. So, what you need to find? You need to find that what is the gauge pressure at the downstream section. Okay. Frictional effects may be neglected. Okay. You may neglect the effect of friction. 
and you have to assume the density of water to be 999 kg per meter cube okay so please read the question once again so there is a circular pipe and it is a tapered pipe why it is a tapered pipe because the diameter is varying at one section at the upstream, upstream section the diameter is 0.3 meter and at a downstream section it is 0 uh, sorry it is 1.5 meter at the upstream section the value of the static pressure the velocity and the elevation is given okay and at the downstream section also ele uh, the elevation and the pipe diameter is given you need to find the gauge pressure at the downstream section and there are no frictional losses means you can neglect the frictional losses so if you can neglect the frictional losses what is the significance of that it means that uh, you can consider the fluid to be ideal fluid there is no head loss there is no major head loss and you have to assume the density of water to be 999 kg per meter cube okay so what is the situation c whenever possible it is better to draw a pictorial representation of the situation that is being asked in the question so this is the ground level okay and there is a pipe okay pipe is a tapered pipe but the question is whether is it is a horizontal pipe or an inclined pipe. Now, if you look at the elevation, elevation is 10 meter here and 0 meter there. So, definitely it is a inclined pipe. Okay. So, this is the upstream section and this is the downstream section. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the flow direction. In this particular section, say I am writing section 1. And this is say section 2. In this particular section, your values of pressure, velocity or P1, V1, Z1 is given to you. Here, V2 is not given. No, only Z2 is Oh Yeah, one more fact, the diameter D1 is also given. Okay. And here, diameter D2 is given and Z2 is given. And you need to find what is P2. Okay, you need to find what is P2. Okay. So, it is a direct application of Bernoulli's equation. And why direct application? See, the, here it is written that Bernoulli's equation is valid for real fluid. But the original form of the Bernoulli's equation is valid for ideal fluid. So, it is ideal fluid. It is given you have to neglect the friction losses. But even for a real fluid, if you account for the major losses, then also you can use Bernoulli's uh, equation for a real fluid. Anyway, so this is a direct application of Bernoulli's equation. <clears throat> so, for finding P2 here, Z2 is given, D2 is given, but you need V2 also. So, how will you find V2? How will you find V2? Because if you don't know or if you do not, uh, yeah, if you don't know V2, you cannot apply Bernoulli's equation because otherwise there will be two unknowns and a single equation. But your, the question, the only unknown is P2. Okay, and in the question V2 is also not given. So for V2, two, two unknowns, you need two equations. So how will you obtain V2? Anyone? Law of mass conservation. Yeah, you will use, we will use mass conservation. And here it is a direct application of mass conservation because it is given that the, means not directly but indirectly, we are sure that it is an ideal fluid. And since it is an ideal fluid, okay, and you can assume it is water, so a constant density, incompressible. So you can use the continuity equation in the incompressible form. Okay, and you can find the answer. So please try and tell me what is the answer. All of you. Okay.
Yeah, uh, Priya, uh, somebody wrote we need a solution for problems in the assignment. So, which assignment? For the current run, are you asking? For last three weeks. Yeah, for last three weeks. Uh, okay, let me make it clear that see this particular, in this particular session, yeah, you can please uh, mute yourself. <laughs> For the current course run, whatever assignments are being given, okay, uh, we are not directly related to that. Okay, so this particular session, the attention is that we will solve some problems, okay, so that it will uh, make your understanding better and you can more effectively solve the assignment problems which are actually there. Okay, now regarding the solution of the assignment for this particular run, the present run or the present assignments. Uh, if I'm not wrong, then the answers uh, for that you please uh, mention yourself. Now, somebody wrote that uh, that day that uh, in the discussion forum, it is not there. See, uh, in this particular platform, in this particular live session, uh, I am no way, means I don't have even the access to the discussion forum. For that particular course, there are a separate a group of people, separate group, group of TAs who are uh, responsible for answering in the forum. Uh, and then uh, what about the assignment solutions uh, for the present assignments that you are doing for the last three weeks. So you please post that in the discussion forum. If not there, you can mail the course instructor or the NPTEL team. Okay. The sole attention of this uh, or concern of this particular live session is that we will be taking some problems related to the content of the uh, a particular week's lecture. And we'll try to solve the problem so that, will, so that it will give you a better understanding that uh, which will help you in solving the actual assignment problems or maybe in the uh, final exams. Okay. So we are not supposed to uh, tell the foolproof uh, or discuss the foolproof solution to the assignments. Means I don't even have the access also. So these two are separate things. So if you have any... Uh, uh, if you have any problem or uh, any concern, any query related to the pro uh, solution for the assignment problems, then you please uh, write it in the forum if they are not answering because somebody uh, informed me that they are not answering, then uh, I am not directly responsible or uh, concerned, uh, not even related to that team. Okay, I, I don't even have the access. Now, this live session now, if you uh, remember, every uh, Tuesday you get a mail. Okay, so this is only a problem solving session and by problem solving, it doesn't mean the problem of the assignment. In fact, some of us were uh, directly taking uh, the assignment problem. So there, uh, there was an intimation from the NPTEL team that we are not supposed to take the direct assignment problems which are given. Okay. We can take related problems. We can take assignment problems from the previous course runs. That is fine. But this year's assignment, we cannot take the problem. So please try to understand. Okay. Fine. Uh, Pradeep uh, got the answer is 202.557 kilopascal. Okay, let's see. Anyways, as I told you, uh, the main answer is not that important. How you are doing it, the way it is very important. Let's see. So, uh, as I told you, see, uh, it is better. Now, why I have taken this particular solution? See, this particular form. Okay, this is the continuity equation and this continuity equation is basically derived from Reynolds transport theorem. Okay. Now for steady flow, it is this and for incompressible for the present case, A1, B1 equal to A2, B2. So for competitive exams, I can understand that there is not much time. So you directly write this and you do the calculations because in competitive exam, uh, even one second matters a lot. But when you have time, please try to formulate the equations from the basic principles or the fundamentals. So in this case, as you can see, Reynolds transport theorem was used okay the continuity equation and then from that it was derived gradually anyways so from this a1 v1 a2 v2 a1 since the diameter okay since the diameters are known to us diameter d1 and d2 we can find the area a1 and a2 because it is a pi circular cross section so pi d square by 4 is the area you can find the area if you know the area, you know the velocity from A1 Vn equal to A2 V2, you can find V2. That is, you can find the velocity at section 2. Okay. You can find velocity at section 2. Okay. Now, <coughs> sorry. P1 by rho, see, this is a particular form. P1 by rho G, 
here it is not uh, used in that form so they have simply multiplied with a g the both both the side so once you know v2 it is a direct application of bernoulli's knowledge equation p1 by rho g p1 square by 2 is g plus z1 p2 by rho g p2 square by 2 is g plus z2 where z2 it is given that z2 is equal to 0 meter so actually it is not appearing in the uh, computations so uh, here the answer is 290.57 and how much pradeep obtained 202 so pradeep uh, please uh, recheck your calculation i am not telling that this is the correct even your answer might be correct okay but please uh, check recheck it okay once more and uh, don't worry about the final answer in this particular sessions but i hope you have understood the procedure okay so since there were two unknowns pressure and velocity at section 2 since there were two unknowns that is pressure and velocity at section 2 you need two equations so one equation is definitely Bernoulli's equation and the other equation is continuity equation so you use continuity equation to obtain v2 and then with the help of that you obtain p2 okay so i hope this problem is clear now let's move to the next problem okay a 45 degree reducing pipe band in a horizontal plane okay tapers from 600 millimeter dia at the inlet to 300 millimeter dia at the outlet the pressure at the inlet is 140 kilopascal gauge and the rate of flow of water through the band is 0 0.425 meter cube per second neglecting friction neglecting friction Neglecting friction, calculate the net resultant horizontal force exerted by water on the bed. Assume uniform flow conditions with straight and parallel streamlines at inlet and outlet and the fluid to be frictionless. Now see this, this last line is very important. I will come to that. But what is the situation? There is a 45 degree reducing pipe bed. Okay. So what is the meaning of a 45 degree reducing pipe bed? It means that there is a pipe bed. Okay. And it is a reducing. Now this angle, pi band means there will be angle. It is a reducing one. Now this angle, okay, this angle is 45 degree. It is a reducing pi band means the diameter is reducing. Okay. And most importantly, in a horizontal plane. Okay. So the pipe lies in a horizontal plane. It means that if you draw, so this is the, say this is our horizontal. So this entire setup lies on this plane. Okay. So this entire setup lies on this plane. The pressure at the inlet, oh, sorry, tapers from 600 mm diameter at the inlet. So, here, say so this is the inlet. The diameter is 600 mm, 600 millimeter dia at the inlet. And a dia of 300 mm at the outlet. So, at the outlet, okay, the dia is 300 mm. The pressure at the inlet, say I am say uh, writing inlet as section 1 and say outlet is section 2. So P1 is given, pressure at the inlet that is P1 is given and the discharge Q is given. Okay. Neglecting friction, calculate the net horizontal force exerted by water on the band. Okay. The presence of this band makes what? As water is flowing at this location, the water will exert some force on the band and the band will exert an equal and opposite force on the flowing water. Okay. So you have to find that force. Okay, you have to find that force. And for that, there are certain assumptions which are uniform flow conditions, straight and parallel streamlines at inlet and outlet and for to be frictionless. Now these assumptions, if you have gone through the lectures carefully or if you just follow some book, you will see that these assumptions signifies that you can readily apply Bernoulli's equation okay but this equation uh, this particular equation is little bit complicated because uh, from Bernoulli's equation you will get what you will get pre see pressure at 1 is given you will need pressure at 2 once you know pressure at 1 and 2 you will be also requiring the velocity at section 1 velocity at section 2 okay and then finally you have to apply the momentum equation for getting the answer okay i am not asking you to solve this problem right now because it is little bit complicated so we'll do this problem we'll discuss the solution step by step okay 
now again i am telling there is no need to panic about the final answer please look at the solution strategy or the solution methodology carefully okay so uh, yeah this we have already seen so this is the pipe band okay so this is the pipe band so this is the band angle is 45 degree okay the band angle is 45 degree now this is x direction y direction this is say our section 1 and this is our section 2 okay now these dotted lines 1 2 3 4 okay the area enclosed by these dotted lines signifies the control volume okay it signifies the control volume fine now you have to find what is it has been asked you need to calculate the net resultant horizontal force so basically the fx okay but before that what is the first step the first step is the application of bernoulli's equation and for the application of bernoulli's equation you need v1 and you need v2 now please mind carefully in the question the discharge at section 1 okay at the inlet is given which is 0.425 meter cube per second so discharge at section 1 is 0.425 meter cube per second at this section that is the inlet okay now since there is no other losses in terms of there is no other mass loss so from continuity equation whatever discharge is in section 1 that much discharge will be there at section 2 also because in between there is no leakage or there is no other loss okay so from continuity equation the discharge at section 1 that is the inlet and the discharge at section 2 that is the outlet will be same so that is the first part you calculate the velocity at 1 v1 so this is the discharge and you divide it by area area see the diameter at both the section that is at the inlet and the outlet at the inlet it is 600 mm and at the outlet it is 300 mm so the diameter is given so 600 mm means 600 into 10 to the power minus 3 so 0.6 basically meter square so this is the velocity at the inlet similarly the velocity at the outlet since the discharge will be same okay is has come to us now the control volume now this region enclosed by these dotted lines is the control volume okay from Bernoulli's equation now if we apply Bernoulli's equation at section 1 and section 2 I am explaining this equation okay now if you apply Bernoulli's equation at section 1 and section 2 so what you can write you can write P1 by rho G plus v1 square sorry v1 square by twice g plus z1 is equal to sorry p2 by rho g plus v2 square by twice g plus z2 now since in the question it is given that this entire setup lies on the horizontal plane so whatever convenient datum you choose the value of z1 and z2 will be equal and they will cancel out okay so z1 and z2 will cancel out why because this entire setup in the question it is given that in a hor the 45 degree reducing pipe bend in the horizontal plane so if they are lying on the same horizontal plane the value of z1 and z2 it is not zero i'm just saying that the value of z1 and z2 are same and hence it will not come into calculation it will cancel out so what is left p1 by rho g v1 square by twice g p2 by rho g v2 square by twice g p1 is given to us okay and we need p2 v1 and v2 so we need p2 so if you do a little bit of manipulation what will you get you will get this equation p2 is equal to p1 plus half of rho v1 square by see the g's are there in the acceleration due to gravity are there in all the terms so g will get cancel out so you will get left with this particular expression you put the value you will find the value of p2 so it is 123 kilopascal approximately okay so we have obtained p2 so that is the first part of the problem okay now let us look at this the pressure force at section 1 is p1a1 the pressure force at section 2 is p2a2 okay now what are the forces okay what are the forces p1 a1 you have to apply the momentum equation okay you have to apply 
the momentum equation along x and y direction for the control volume. So this is say the x direction. The first one is f direction. P1, A1. Okay. So P1, A1 is acting along x direction. P1, A1 acting along x direction. Minus P2, A2 cos 45. Now what is the P2, A2 direction of P2, A2 is normal to the cross section at the outlet. Okay. P2, A2. So this is the direction P2, A2. But what will be the component of P2, A2 along component of P2A2 along x-axis, okay. So, it, it will be along the negative x-axis, okay. It will be along the negative x-axis, okay. And with a 45 degree band, it will be, okay. It will be along negative. So, negative x-axis, magnitude of P2A2 minus of cos 45 degree, okay. Then we are considering this is the fx, so plus, sorry, plus fx, okay. Now, because of V2 and V1, Okay, because of V2, so rho Q, this is V1. So because of V1, there is, it is directly along the x-axis, okay. It is directly along x-axis. See, this equation is the manipulated form. So if you rho Q minus V1 will be on this side, so rho Q plus V1. So or if you write, okay, if you write directly, I think that will be a better idea. So what are the forces? P1 A1 minus P2 A2 cos 45 degree plus fx plus rho q v1. Okay, rho q v1. Fine. Rho q v1. Now, what will be about this? Okay, again along the negative x axis. So, it will be. minus rho q v2 cos 45 degree equal to 0. Okay. So, this equation is written here directly. Okay. Rho q v2. So, it, on the other side it will be minus. Now, if you look at this particular equation, the only unknown is fx. Okay. So, from this equation you can find the value of fx. Okay. And this negative sign basically means the fx is acting along the negative x-axis. Okay, that's it. Similarly, if you write for the y direction. So, along y direction, what are the forces? Because of this P1, U, A1, there will be no component. So, there will be Fy. Okay, Fy. Because of this P2, A2, it will be again the negative P2, A2 along the negative y direction. Okay, along the negative y direction. So, along the negative y direction. P2 A2 minus now what will be the value sine for the P2 A2 minus of so it will be Fy minus P2 A2 sine 45 degree okay then because of V1 component there will be no force but because of V2 component there will be a force okay so look at this equation minus of P2 A2 Fy rho q v2 and this 0 is because of the v1 component okay along y direction there is no component of v1 so from there you find the value of fy but this is fx and fy in the question it is only asked to obtain it is only asked to obtain the net resultant horizontal force okay so the net resultant horizontal force is fx only but if you want the total force then also you can find the total force is the Vector summation of fx and fy. Okay. So, see, this problem is also very simple, but uh, it requires, it is basically you have to do it in two steps. In the first step, you need to apply Bernoulli's equation to find the respective pressure head. Sorry. In the first step, you need to apply continuity equation, okay, to find the velocity values. Then you apply Bernoulli's equation to find the pressure head and then you apply the momentum equation. So, in a single problem, all the three conservation laws, that is mass, momentum and energy, uh, are being utilized okay in this particular problem now this is uh, another problem in a smooth pipe okay the figure is given in a smooth pipe of uniform diameter the diameter is same okay 25 centimeter a pressure of 50 kilopascal was observed at section 1 so at section 1 which is at a elevation of 10 meter okay the pressure was 50 kilopascal at another section 2 okay which is at an elevation of 12 meter the pressure was 20 kilopascal. 
okay and the velocity is 1.25 meter per second okay you have to determine the direction of flow okay means whether the flow is taking place from 1 to 2 or from 2 to 1 and the head loss between these two sections what is the loss of energy between these two sections okay the fluid in the pipe is water you consider that the fluid in the pipe is water so what you need to do see the first part is the diameter of the pipe is 25 cm okay and it is uniform it at section 1 also it is 25 cm at section 2 also it is 25 cm so it means that the area a1 area and a2 area a1 and a2 they are also same because the diameter is same now if a1 and a2 are same what about the velocity if we apply continuity equation v1 a1 equal to v2 a2 a1 a2, a2 will get cancelled out it means that v1 and v2 will be same so you know v1 and v2 okay you know z1 and z2 okay and the pressure p1 and p2 is also known at p1 it is 50 kilopascal at p2 it is uh, and p2 is it is 20 kilopascal so you basically find or you calculate the total energy okay the total head at section 1 h1 and the total head at section 2 h2 okay and you see where the head is higher if the head is higher at 1 then the flow will take place from 1 to 2 if the head is higher at 2 then the flow will take place from 2 to 1 okay so that is the first part and then the difference between these two heads represent the head loss okay so is the procedure clear is the procedure clear yes sir okay so let's look at the solution so since the discharge a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 so a1 equal to a2 v1 is known to us okay head one you have found out h1 h2 you have obtained so the value of h1 is 15.187 meter the value of h2 is 14.123 meter so which head is higher h1 is higher so the flow will take place from section 1 to section 2 section 1 to section 2 okay and the difference between these two is 1.064 meter okay so these are some problems now please practice now there are lot of problems lot of varieties in Bernoulli's equation which is not possible to take up uh, during a one hour session or uh, during uh, lectures also so uh, uh, if you have followed the NPTEL lectures and this uh, session carefully then I hope you have got some idea now please try to so uh, solve some problems from any standard book and it will give you a better hold on this topic and mind it this problem of Bernoulli's equation is very important okay it is very important uh, you will definitely if you sit for any exam you will definitely get if uh, if you there is a like there is a probability of 90% that if you are getting some problem from fluid mechanics 90% of the uh, cases there that it will somehow involve Bernoulli's equation so this is a very important topic so please try to solve the problem so let's stop here today Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can please leave the meeting. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hi, H. Yes. Yes. Did you stop any other one?